Oh, there's Mike right now. All right, Kevin, take it away. Well, thank you all for coming to tonight's Public Works Committee meeting and tree board meeting. Um, one of our first things is to call the meeting to order, which we don't have a past uh, uh, chairperson. So what do we, can I just call it to order? Oh, hey. You just did. <laughs> we're, we're now in order. Um, we need to take uh, elections for vice chair and, and chairperson. We have any nominations? I nominate Ruth Kazi as chair and Matt Lehman as vice chair. I second, that that? I second that opinion. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. We have um, Councillor, oh. is Councillor Kazi for is our chair? And Mr. Lehman, Councillor Lehman is our vice chair. All righty. Chairperson, I will let you take over from here. I think we do need to take a vote on it. Just take a vote. Oh, on we it. do. We do. I'm sorry. Aye. <laughs> aye, aye. Okay. Matt, you have to say I. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That's now okay. officially. Not that I'm putting words in your mouth. Like <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, Councillor Cause, if I could, um, would you mind just stating for the record who's in attendance at tonight's meeting? Um, of course, I'd be happy to. Um, you know, myself, Councillor Ruth Causey, we have Councillors Matt Lehman and David Lowe, tree board members Rick Flacco and Lori Hendon, uh, guest Gianna Bernardini, and we also have from staff Chris Workman, Mike Marzinski, <laughs> Gary Black, and of course, Kevin Fear. All right, that I think we can um, proceed to approval of the minutes of December 2nd and January 6th. Um, and do, do the counselors, Layman or Lowe, do you have any comments? Uh, having been present, I don't know, but I, they look fine to me and I would make a motion to approve. If that's, okay. Okay. I would. That. I would like to make one minor correction to the minutes of let's see, January 6th. Um, I believe it was January 6th. Yes, um, there's an indication that um, I had requested a stop, a four way stop at uh, the intersection of Quail Glen and Ninth. Um, and the intersection where I was requesting it was actually Pioneer and Ninth. However, I would like to see a crosswalk painted in at Quail Glen and Ninth because we will have children crossing there. So that's the only correction I would note. Councilor Kazi? Yes. Uh, so it, did you actually um, uh, make, make that statement about wanting the painted in crosswalk at Quail or is this an addition to what? This is in addition to. So I'm wondering if that's appropriate to put the in a I mean, the thing that wasn't actually mentioned that meeting, I'm not sure if it's appropriate to add that to the old minutes. I may be uh, wrong, but I'm not sure. Um, no, I believe you're correct, but I believe the corrections that are noted tonight will be incorporated in this meeting's minutes. Is that right, Chris? Yeah, we can make note of that in the minutes for this meeting. Uh, but if I could, do you, are, I'm assuming you're on page two somewhere. Do you have a line number oh, so I can reference the correction? Let's 
Uh, oh, there it is. It's on uh, it's on page three, line 13, 14. Okay, thank you. So we'll correct that from Ninth Street, Quagla, to Ninth Street and Pioneer? Yes. Okay. And then we'll make note in the minutes for tonight's meeting about the um, sidewalk crossing at Quagla. Okay, thank you thank very you. much. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as amended? Yes. Okay. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Great. Okay. Now we can move on to the tree board business. And um, Kevin, will you be discussing this item? Uh, I think Gary probably is going to take the lead on this one. Okay. Hey, good evening, everyone. How's everybody doing tonight? Woohoo. Good. Right on. So um, in your packet, you had a um, some information about a heritage tree program. Hopefully you had a chance to read that over. Um, it was brought to us. Um, is it, I guess we're looking to see if, uh, if the Public Works Committee wants to um, start looking at doing a heritage tree program or you know wh where we're at with that I guess is what we're we're looking at for tonight I know uh, yes Councilor Lehman yeah I'd like to get some staff input on that because we have heard some public input but I haven't really heard any staff input on a heritage tree program I um, I don't think it's a bad idea I, I I'm not so sure we have a lot of um heritage type trees in Philomath, I think we'd have to, um, you know, we'd have to recognize some, I think there's some bigger trees and, and uh, important trees in Philomath, but um, it was something we'd need to look at. And I, I think as far as the program itself, um, you know, we got an example from Corvallis in here. I think we can look at doing something similar to that. I mean, I don't think we need to reinvent the wheel. Um, on the program itself. I think it'd be pretty simple to make it and uh, move forward with it. That's where we want to go. Um, Rick, do you have your hand up? Uh, I, di I didn't. Um, you didn't. Do you have I, any uh, thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, Councillor Causey. Uh, it seems like something that's a relatively low lift to implement, uh, you know, in line with our Tree City desi uh, USA designation, uh, you know, I think this would complement that and, you know, kind of move forward our, um, you know, our commitment to, to, tree, to tree, tree preservation um, in, in town. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I think I gravitate, um, you know, I, I like Corvallis's. I like the specificity of Portland's where they go a little bit into, uh, you know, what would be necessary for removal uh, of them. They mentioned that we're decommissioning it. Um, that just pulls at my heartstrings a little bit to think that a, <laughs> a heritage tree could be decommissioned. But uh, anyway, um, but yeah, you know, I mean, I have questions about with that, uh, you know, in any way, would there be any circumstances where one would not be decommissioned, I guess, or uh, approved for removal? Uh, so I have some questions around that. But overall, I think it's a great idea. Okay. Um, I mean, is there uh, anyone else who wanted to share any comments on this? Yes, David. Well, if, <clears throat> if there were other um, tree board members, if Lori or uh, and Gina, if, if they have comments, uh, I, I'd like to go, I mean, I'd go after them. I just, thank you, Councillor Lowe. Um, we have these three different examples from Albany, Corvallis, and Portland, and they seemed very different in terms of, spec, you know, specificity and 
requirements. And I, and I wondered if they fought, if they're all under the auspices or under uh, uh, the Arbor Day Foundation model. I just wondered what was the relationship between those three different examples? Um, and is this an Arbor Day Foundation program or is it some other kind of program? Is it more of a, like there's a, I saw something about a, a like a travel Oregon program where people go and visit the different heritage trees in the, in the state. Um, so I, was, I wasn't clear if, if we're following one program or another. I think it falls under the umbrella of the Arbor Day Foundation's um, overall mission uh, for the Heritage Tree Program. And, you know, if you, if the uh, committee wants us to move forward with writing a program, I will definitely use the Arbor Day uh, Foundation as uh, guidelines. Um, and we'll, and we'll, we'll pick and, and prod from other agencies to see what fits for us. Uh, not everything's gonna fit for us, um, but we'll make it work if that's where we wanna move forward with. And, and is yeah. there a, a cost to the city? Um, as of right now, I would think the only cost would be time, uh, my time to look at a program. Um, moving forward uh, with heritage trees, I'll be honestly, Lori, I'm not sure at this point. Um, I'd have to do some research on that. That's a good question because there might be some costs, you know, if. Uh, if all of a sudden we deem a heritage tree and somebody wants to take it down because they have to, I don't know, want to build a shop or something, you know, we got to figure out what our liabilities are or something like that. That's the one problem about making a heritage tree program. You do um, start limiting what can be removed and what can't be removed. Um, you know, I, when I lived in Corvallis, I know that you couldn't take a tree down more than, I think it was six inch in diameter without a special permit. Uh, we don't currently have anything like that in Philomath. Um, you know, we, I think we need to be careful as an agency to make sure if that, I mean, if that's the way we want to go, that's the way we want to go. But, I'm, you know, I want to make sure that uh, we don't get too deep into people's weeds, you know what I mean? So... That would be one of the things that uh, I think we'd need um, some sort of guidance from the committee on as to how strict uh, you would want it. That was the, the kind of some of the difference between the three that we included is uh, some of them are all voluntary. Uh, somebody can volunteer a tree on private property, the person that owns that tree would have to agree to it, but they're under no obligation to seek a permit or cut any trees on private property. Um, some of the other ones are that it covers everybody on private property and the city convinces that's a heritage tree, you're not cutting it down. Um, we kind of not really fully crossed that bridge years ago, but with the city taking a uh, kind of a, a stance on, we're going to be telling you what you can and can't do on your private property in the line of removing a tree did not go well uh, through the city council meeting. Not Jim. saying that if it's a heritage tree, it was more, we were looking at more um, sized trees, kind of like Salem does. And like Gary said, Corvallis does heritage trees. It might be a, a, a different story with that, but um, we would need guidance as to uh, where where we want to be or where where the committee sees that going. Deanna, do you have a comment? Uh, yes, I do. <clears throat> um, so I'm the person who brought this idea forward to um, the city council. Um, and before I did so, I did quite a bit of research on heritage tree programs in other cities. And I can tell you that what I have learned is that there is 
a national heritage tree registry that does have fairly strict parameters and guidelines and strictures. But the vast majority of cities do not abide by that. It, they, it is the kind of program which can be tailored to any individual town. If Plumouth decides we want to have a heritage tree program, we can determine what the parameters are and what the rules around that will be. So we are not beholden to any organization or any umbrella group if we decide to go that route. Um, I'll also say that I'm, I'm somewhat disheartened that this conversation so immediately went to the direction of what are we gonna do if people wanna cut these things down and what are people's rights? Um, I can also say that in my homework doing, I spoke with um, the urban foresters in Corvallis and Albany about their programs. And both of them told me immediately and upfront that being a heritage tree did not mean that those trees could not be cut down. It did not afford in either of those cities any kind of legal protection for cutting down a heritage tree. Property owners maintain the rights, the property rights on that tree. What it does do, what one of them told me, is it creates something of a speed bump in the process. It means that if they're going to cut it down, they'll hopefully come to the city. And there's it simply says, hold on, slow down. But ultimately, there is no legal protection offered by this unless we so decide to make it that way. But my understanding is that in most towns, it's more of a, um, what's the word, a ceremonial title. Um, it's more to draw attention to the significance of the tree and to simply draw attention to the beauty of the tree in the community. It is not meant to be some sort of a legal wedge or some sort of a obstacle to development. That's not the purpose of this program. That is not the, my intent in introducing it. This is not designed to prevent progress in Philomath in any way. It is simply a chance to celebrate some of the incredible natural beauty that we are lucky to have in this town and to foster a sense of civic pride in some of the trees we have here. I'm also disheartened to hear this notion that we do not have trees worthy of saving here. I can rattle off at least five to 10 that would qualify under any rubric. Trees do not have to be 40 feet in diameter. They don't have to be a thousand year old redwood to qualify as a heritage tree. We have trees both large enough, interesting enough. In every way, we have heritage trees in this community. Um, lastly, as far as there being restrictions on tree removal, I am a planning commissioner as well. And we already have rules dictating removal of trees over a certain set of inches. That used to be six inches. We recently increased it to 12 inches. So that's already on the books. That's municipal code that has nothing to do with the heritage tree program. But it is true that we do have certain limitations on removal of, of large trees in development. But that is separate from this program or rather concurrent with and not related to it. And Chris, correct me if I'm wrong about, about the, um, the restrictions on tree removal on private property. I think he, he may have left already, but that's my <laughs> recollection, Gianna, that, that, that was changed from six to 12 inches. Um, I really appreciate your input and your comments and your research. Um, in your conversations with the urban foresters, did they give you any indication as whether as to whether the designation as a heritage tree would discourage people from removing it? You know, if they knew, you know, it's a heritage tree. I might have taken it out, but I'm not going to. 
Honestly, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that's generally the idea. Yeah. I mean, and I think and I think that that's appropriate. I mean, we're not going to be running around slapping this designation on every tree on every block. The, the notion is let's only find those ones that really are special. The ones that if you look at them, anybody will see that and say, whoa, you're right. That's a very cool tree. Um, that sort of thing. This isn't this isn't designed to be a, a tool. This is simply designed to be a showcase. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and I think any of us would agree that that's a good idea. I think I don't think any of us want. I mean, all of us have seen that happen where there's been some huge beautiful tree that someone takes down for some dumb reason, and it's depressing. It's depressing to anyone. You don't have to be a tree hugger. We've all seen that and experienced it. And, uh, you know, if this program could be used to make a person say, hold on, hang on. Are you sure you need to take this tree down? Are you sure that's what you want to do? Because this tree is a point of, of pride for the community. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, Councilor Moe. Um, a couple of questions, or one question anyway. So is it just private property that has your trees would apply to or also public property? I assume it would be both, but is, it, but is that the intent, Gianna? Again, exactly. That's my thinking, because I already know of um, ones on, in both for example, in, in Mary's River Park, there is the very large cottonwood tree, which I previously mentioned. Um, there is the redwood grove planted by the high school in the 50s, uh, or the, I'm sorry, it wasn't planted in the 50s, it was sponsored by the, the high school class of, I think, 58, 59. That's a great example of a grove which should be sort of recognized. Mm -hmm. Um, on private property, if you look at 19th and Pioneer, um, those two huge oaks that are left standing in front of the little house <laughs> in that one little corner right there, those are some gorgeous oak trees. I don't know how old they are, but surely they're old. You have the Beathers House over on North 8th Street that also has some oaks. On 9th, you have a couple of incredible Doug firs down there between Maine and Pioneer, ginormous. Um, lots of cool stuff, lots of cool trees on private property, on public property. This is gonna be really, really fun. I would also, <laughs> like, to point out, I would also like to point out that if we do go ahead with this, and if we decide that we want to create our own program, um, it's entirely up to you as the tree board or whoever, how you want that to be administered and who you want um, to be in charge of designating trees. Um, that's something that you can do yourselves. It's also something that we could open up to the community at large and say, nominate trees that you think are important and that you think are worthy of this designation. and. Personally, I like that idea because I, I think it's a cool way to get the community involved. Yeah. Um, I also think that there's a, a lot of opportunity, of exciting opportunity around getting, say, the high school forestry club involved um, in things like tree identification. If once a tree has been nominated, that tree is going to have to be measured and, you know, the species identified and all of that. And I was like, oh my God, this could be really cool. We could get the kids involved. It could be a whole community thing if we want it. But again, up to you, I don't care. I just love for this to, to happen in some way or, or form. I have a lot of ideas, but I also don't need to be involved in it in any way, so. Counselor though. I love your passion. <laughs> Wonderful, yeah. Uh, and I appreciate you, you you're talking about the, the various facets of it. <clears throat> I, personally, for me, um, I really like the idea of a voluntary uh, part of the program. I'm, the less government, the, the less 
uh, city staff maybe or council need to be involved, I think the better. Uh, I think if it could be a more of we, I'm just thinking out loud, but we sanction it or we approve it or we welcome it, however we do that as a council, um, but we basically have it be a voluntary uh, uh, movement where you don't necessarily need to have city councilors or, or elected officials or appointed officials have to be involved uh, and it, to have it be driven. And I think, Jana, just hearing from you, you'd be the perfect person <laughs> if that was something you were interested in. But um, I really, personally, I really like the idea of the Heritage Tree Program. I think it really, um, being, as Rick said, the, the tree city, we, um, are under the last couple of councils I was on, I know uh, Mayor Neiman was very uh, proud of being able to proclaim that on, on Arbor Day. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's part of our community. And uh, so anyway, I'm supportive of it. Um, I'm more, uh, I'm oriented towards the voluntary aspect of it. Um, I see that our request is to develop or have staff, I guess, develop uh, develop the program draft for either this committee or this council to look at. Um, I, I think that would be appropriate to do. So. Uh, if I can make a suggestion, I wonder if I could ask, or if we could ask our tree board members and Gianna to work together on developing a draft. I don't know why staff would have to do that. I think probably the three of you are much closer to what you'd like to see in the program. Mm -hmm. uh, Council uh, Layman. Uh, yeah, one thing I was thinking about is um, how, how we can designate the heritage trees at the tree so that like with a placard or signage or something, and you often see like in botanical gardens or whatever, just little little placards that say what the species is, the year it was added to the heritage tree list or whatever. And if you're a private property owner and you don't wanna have that, then that could be your option. But particularly for the trees in public property, I think that's a great idea to put that type of information. So it lets everybody know that, hey, this tree is significant, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, Rick. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to say I really uh, appreciate the research that you've put into this, uh, Gianna, and uh, of course the passion that you bring to it. Uh, I really look forward to uh, swapping specimens and seeing, uh, hearing some of the other uh, other trees that you uh, that you have in mind. Um, one or two come to my mind at least uh, as well, and. Um, you know, I, I'd say that I, I look forward to working with you on on this and developing the a draft to bring um, to the committee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Councillor Lowe. Yeah. Um, so one thing I think would be good to have in the draft or just be thought out anyway is uh, even if there's a small cost, uh, and I agree with Councillor Lehman that having some sort of a little placard or or a sign or something that says this is an historic tree. I mean, there is gonna be some little cost to that. So I'm not quite sure we, it'd be good for the city to know who would be fronting that cost. Is it something we'd wanna have in a budget, uh, even as small as it is, or maybe it's a few thousand, I don't know. But it would be good to address, this, I think from the city's point of view, um, the budgetary costs, and, and Lori, I think, I'm glad you brought that up before. Uh, budgetary costs and staff time. Uh, those are two things I think that the council and staff, city staff are most interested in that way. Okay. Uh, let's see. Gianna, do you have any other comments? Your hand is still up. Oh, sorry. No. No worries. Um, could... <laughs> Let's see, could I have a motion to have the tree board and Commissioner Bernardini move forward with creating a draft for a heritage tree program? Okay, thank you. Don't move. Don't do it. 
<laughs> so moved. <laughs> Do I have a second? <laughs> oh, I'll second. Yes. You'll second. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure when our next meeting will be scheduled. It will probably be uh, in approximately a month, I would imagine. Um, does, it, does that give the three of you enough time to get together and work something up? Okay, great. Then we'll look forward to hearing back from you. Um, I did want to mention on a separate topic, um, I know that the removal of trees in Mary's River Park in order to accommodate the um, water treatment plant and the bioswale um, are a concern to people. And I want to be sure that we identify um, the number of trees that will be removed and that those trees are replaced uh, by new trees uh, somewhere. So I think it would be it would be helpful to me to have the tree board kind of thinking about where those trees could go um, unless staff has other thoughts about it. No thoughts. Nope. Okay. <laughs> we'll, just we'll take all the input to, we can get. Okay. Just something to noodle over. I don't know how soon that's going to happen, but um, <clears throat> I do want to be sure they're replaced. Um, I was, I was kind of under the understanding the park board was deciding where trees were going in parks. I may be wrong there, but that was okay. my thought. But street trees. Gary and and Lige, our arborist, have worked together to find appropriate trees in the in the places where they create the least amount of hazard with uh, other utilities and and things. So, um, but by all means, we're always open to suggestions on where to where you'd like to see trees planted and to make every effort to get them there. Okay. Um. With, with respect to the budget, I assume that the costs that are incurred for the Arbor Day celebration come out of the public works budget. Yes. Okay. So if there are costs related to this, I assume that's where they would go. Um, with that, are there any other comments on the tree board business or the heritage tree program before we move on? The, uh... Tree board, I just want to let everybody know that um, we made another year of Arbor Day uh, Tree City USA. Uh, Arbor Day will be April 29th. Uh, we're going to have a celebration at the Philomath Public Works compound. Uh, it will involve the staff, custom volunteers, uh, and the elementary school and the Kings Valley Charter School. You're all welcome to attend. It's going to be at uh, 825 on April 29th. Thanks. Thank you. So your email app looked good. <laughs> and Councilor Love. Yeah, and so along with that, it, do, do we have the mayor read a proclamation or make make that a statement during our council meeting? I, I'm trying to remember if we did that last year or not. Yes, um, I just talked to Ruth. She's gonna type it up and have it ready for the April 11th. Uh, council meeting and okay. typically the mayor or uh, Chris Workman will read it at the Arbor Day celebration. If the mayor is not available, Chris will read it for us. Great. Great. All right. With that, then I think we can move on to the 2022-2023 capital improvement plan. Um, and Kevin, will you be walking us through this? Um, I was going to, but uh, Mr. Merzinski, he, uh, during our staff meeting today, insisted that he was going to do it uh, since he was a new finance director and would like to get his face out in front of the committees uh, <laughs> as soon as possible. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, I, I can help walk it through. Um, 
he's been through many more of these than I have and and uh, I'm more uh, regulating the spending than instead of setting how much we have to spend so uh, I will help out any way I can but uh, Mike if you want to chime in uh, <laughs> I will give it the best I can do because <laughs> it's like this is really new to me as you all know that um, I don't mind taking the lead I can why don't you take the lead this year, Kevin? I'm going to have to decline your nomination. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm still learning. I've been here, what, over a week now? So yeah, I'm not quite up to speed yet. Well, we were we were told you were coming in running. and I'm running. Take the reins right. and go. So <laughs> I'm running all right. <laughs> um, shall we start with... Uh, um, start with water unless only water yeah and then, kevin did you get my email with the corrections and requests yeah, i didn't put this together so all i have is the pdf uh, version uh -huh. um i think the the editable document one is back at city hall with uh mr workman who worked till last night sometime putting it together so okay uh, i'm sure he'll get it corrected okay yeah. were you a teacher before <laughs> <laughs> no but i did a lot of peer reviewing documents <laughs> uh, okay a lot of red check marks on this thing there are <laughs> yeah, my primary Concern is actually updating those two schedules that were not updated from last year. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, well, with the water fund, as you know, we still have the water treatment plant and the reservoir uh, going along. Um, construction costs have climbed uh, quite a bit, really. Uh, so there is a slight increase in the cost of the treatment plant uh, budget. Uh, we're hoping we're, that that's a generous amount um, and it will come in well under that, but until it bids and, and we get going on it, we probably won't know that for sure. Um, Chris had added, uh, I think the last three projects, four projects, um, right. on the bottom, just as placeholders. Yep. Not anything that we're really looking at. We want to get the treatment plant to, and the reservoir done uh, and then revisit um, these other water projects later on. Um, Kevin, may I make a comment? Sure. <laughs> Um, and I also need this um, at the finance and administration meeting yesterday, but um, the 11th Street water line and sewer line upsizing, uh -huh. um, I'm opposed to doing those because they're not needed. They're a convenience because the street will be hopefully be torn up. But my understanding is that that pipe is is adequate for now and it's being done in anticipation of future development. Um, my, well, feeling is that, my feeling is that the, the developers should pay for it when they do the development. For 11th Street? Yes. Um, I'd have to double check that. Yeah. Okay. Are we upsizing? Yes. Yeah. Okay, going from eight to a 10? Mm -hmm. I believe. Yes. Um, Chris and I have agreed to disagree about this. <laughs> I would only say that the cost between, uh, we have an eight inch cast iron line that's in there now that is fairly old and to pave over it and take the chance of that line breaking, the cost difference between putting in an eight inch line and upgrading it to a 10 inch is so minimal that we could set on that easily and, and forward the cost on to a developer, I believe. Um, 
and it's not just future development, it's to develop higher flows and higher uh, fire protection to the hydrants with more flow out into the Quail Glen area. So it's not just for development stuff that's called for. Okay, well, that's a more compelling argument than Chris <laughs> made. Councillor Lowe. Yeah, so just to clarify on the 11th Street, so that's a, right now it's an eight inch cast iron. I guess I was under the impression it was PVC or something, but it's cast iron now. Cast how, iron. Old, how old is that, would you say? Gary, you remember seeing the date? I, I'd have to go back and look. I want to say it's probably the 60s. The 60s? Early 60s? I would 60s? say no later than the 70, 71. Okay. 60s. Okay. And you had said it's eight inches now and we're going to 12 inches. Is that correct? I think Not 10 yeah, inches. Yeah. It's 10. Okay. So yeah. that in the, in here it's referring to a 12 inch uh, upsize water line to 12 inch. So I thought it was a 10 that we're doing. Uh, eights are minimum. Okay, eights minimum. <laughs> so really be going eight to 10, not eight to 12. Correct. Okay. okay. So we need to change that verbiage, Kevin. It, does it say 12? Yeah, yep. it does. Oh, it does. Yep. Yep. Well, maybe I'd better double check that then. Okay. I thought we were only going to 10. Do you remember what they tapped in when they put, we're set to upsize it when Heather Glenn went in, the contractor is required to put extra valving and T's in or Y's to be able to hook to the, uh, hook the new lines to it. And I, you probably inspected it. Do you remember if it was 10 inch valves or 12? I can't remember. I, it's been a while since we were on that, so I'd have to look at the maps. <laughs> Kevin, is um, is the water PVC and the sewer cast iron, or are they both? Because Chris has specifically said PVC. Uh, part of the sewer on uh, 11th Street is PVC, the northern end of it. Um, because that's been newer, kind of a newer area. The rest of it is concrete, the 1952 concrete that we're trying to get rid of. Oh, okay. okay, thank you. And that's the water. Water's cast iron. Oh, water is cast, okay. And the project, the, the sewer kind of extends out onto some of Pioneer over to, uh, up to about 10th and over to about, uh, 12th or 13th that'll pretty much uh, that's all 52 sewer that we threw in at the same time since the contractor's there and we're hoping we can line most of it um, or pipe burst it and we chose that because it's time to do it while they're standing right there instead of letting that little bit go plus it finishes out one sector of uh, kind of a basin that um, we've got these a couple straight pipes that are in that basin that are still 52 where everything else is upgraded to PVC. So we can wipe that out, get rid of that concrete and that basin will be, should be sealed up pretty, pretty good. Okay, Councilor Lowe. Yeah, I, you know, I get my things mixed up of water and sewer. So I do see in the sewer line that we're talking about upgrade, upsizing to a 10 inch line. So maybe, Maybe it is 12 inches for water. Uh, it's sometimes a little hard to go back and forth and you know which one we're talking about. Yeah, the so, sewer's not being upsized. It should oh, be no. going in at the same size that it already is. Well, it, in the wording, page 21, it says upsized sewer line from Pioneer to da 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 with a 10 inch line. So maybe it isn't upsizing. Maybe we did, maybe it is planned to be upsized through that section, so as long as since we're changing it anyway, the engineers might have figured that that upgrading to a 10 inch is needed or would provide us better, okay. better service. Well, I think the, the thing here is that we want to be really sure that we've got it accurate so we're not picking it apart at the council meeting. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll 
double check all the all the sizes and everything uh, tomorrow. Okay. Okay. I've just been dealing with several other jobs and after a while all the pipe sizes start running together on what we're upsizing <laughs> what we're just replacing so understand <clears throat> um, one other question for you or for mike um at the top of um, the page uh, for both water and sewer it says sdc improv and sdc reimbursement what can you explain what those are I'll do the best I can. Now the improvements are the SDZ improvements is when somebody comes in with new, new um, infrastructure and they they set up payments for it. The reimbursement is basically what we were just talking about, going from an eight to a ten. They'll pay that difference. Um, so and when you go to spend this money, it can only be used for these particular items: basically street water sewer mm -hmm. and uh, parks, transportation, and I think there's one more, I can't remember which one it is. But that's the simple way, I, uh, that's how I keep it straight in my head. Improvement is brand new infrastructure. Reimbursement um, can be for this, this upsize that we're talking about, but it can only be used for those particular items. I see, okay, all right. Um, Councilor Lehman. Yeah, I think when you collect the SDCs is at the point in which you decide which bucket portions of the SDC that you collected are going into. And so it seems like the money in the SDC improvement was designated from previous development in the past mm -hmm. to go into that bucket. And the same for the reimbursement. It doesn't have to do with... Yeah, it can go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. It's so... Good. That's yeah. why, that, Matt, that's why I keep it, keep it in those buckets. Then when it comes in, you start right. digging it out. So yeah, and the simple terms is just that. And then you start getting fancy. So very, very good point. Okay. Um, any further questions on water? Okay, can we move on to sewer? I guess one question I have on the sewer is um, for the South 16th Street project, the engineering cost seems quite high. Is uh, I noticed from one of the engineers reports I have that it's a percentage of the project cost. Is that where that number comes from? Engineering for 16th and yeah, and engineering for 17th. I mean, yeah, if you look at 16 is 73,000 and 17th and 18th, which is a much bigger project, is 104,000. Um, South 16th. is only a sewer upgrade, I believe. I think we have brand new water line through 16th Street. And that's another one that it would have to be, we're replacing everything sewer wise from Main Street um, down 16th to the public works yard. And then it'd also be covering, uh, if it goes through the section between um, tying the end of 16th Street over to Cedar and 17th. So it's a quite a bit larger project and um, the engineering of 17th and 18th Street. I don't know why. Mike, do you remember why we're not doing streets on 16th and 17th? I think we're doing 17th and 18th. I think we're doing them both, at, I think, at the same time. Because if you look over on the streets for the six, South 16th Street, we've got more design over there or more engineering. So we're doing two things there. I, I, I'm thinking that we combined them just because it was cheaper. I don't know. I, I really don't remember that one, Kevin. Okay, yeah, the 16th Street, 
engineering for sewer. Yeah, it covers everything up to Main Street, Main Street down to the public works yard. So, so does, it, does the engineering cause to have to do with the physical size and complexity of the project? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it's basically uh, every covers everything from the bid documents to uh, advertising, uh, everything to do to go out to bid. Uh, also, the engineering of uh, they come in and look and see if we can pipe burst or line it, um, grade changes if they're needed, any of that stuff. So that's all covered in there, along okay. with patching it back. Um, for 16th or 17th and 18th Street, uh, the only thing we're doing on that is is sewer. I'm not sure why he has. Oh, one's engineering and the other ones is the construction sewer. Okay, sorry, I was reading that wrong. Okay. Yeah, that'll be. A lot more in depth, but it is just sewer. Okay. Um, does anyone have any other questions on sewer? If uh, Councillor uh, Lowe, could um, uh, Kevin, could you just remind me what the the bond payment is uh, again? What we're what we're paying for, and maybe how much the balance is. I think Mike had to give you that. Yeah, let me take that. Isn't that the bond for the um, treatment sewer, plant? The sewer lagoons. Oh, that okay. This that rings a bell now. Yeah, I think that. Thank you. I think that's the only bond the city has. I think that's right. Yeah, it's a yeah. It's uh, for the full faith and credit obligation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I, that puts it together for me now. Yeah, you did two. I you did two. Uh, two borrowings. So, yeah, one was URA and one was uh, sewer bond. Okay. Let me uh, back up to that. I was looking at the wrong sheet. I was looking at the old one. I had two different ones here. I thought I had. The 16th Street is just a sewer line from Maine to the city or to the public works uh, uh, yard uh, and a couple spurs of that off, a couple of little short runs off the sides on uh, Applegate Street. The, uh, so that's the engineer. We haven't done any engineering whatsoever yet. That covers engineering, surveying, um, everything to do with, with getting the project shovel ready. Uh, and that would be the same with 17th and 18th. 17th and 18th are both being replaced from Applegate to uh, what would be just past Cedar Street. So that's why it's a little more expensive. There's, we're gonna have to just pay back the ditch, which is not street, it, it's actually sewer work to cap the trench line when they go in and it'll be main line and services so that's and it's two longer runs so that's why why you're seeing it being more expensive is um i believe isn't 17 going to be put through to chapel with mill pond crossing only from cedar street um south so we have to pick it up with any of the other side streets between Applegate and Cedar, 18th will go from, uh, uh, Gary, do you remember? I know it's Applegate. I think it goes past Cedar. It'd have to go past Cedar down to the end, right? That's correct. Okay. I need to bring um, a map home. <laughs> <laughs> um. So do you have to coordinate the work on 17th with the work that's being done by Milk Pond Crossing so you kind of connect things? No. no. No, no. They'll just hook up to what's already there. And if we come in first, uh, which we shouldn't, um, if things go according to schedule, this is still 
uh, scheduled out uh, 2024. So yeah. um, Mill Pond should be in prior to that and they would come in set up for us to just be able to come in and hook to when we're, we're um, moving along, basically right. resetting the manhole and hooking up the old pipes until we get there with our stuff. Okay. Um, any other questions on sewer? Okay, how about street? Um, we have the 11th street. Oh, I have a question there. Uh, <laughs> in looking at the engineer's report, the total cost of that project is um, $880,000. So where, where do you get $343,000? Councillor Layman. Yeah, well, I think the 343 was from the last um, the last option that we reviewed as a city council. That's basically coming from the reserve fund to fill in the gap so that it wouldn't be onerous on the homeowners. My question about that was um, if we actually decided to move forward with that. I'm still up in the air as to whether we actually decided to move forward with the project or not. So here it is in the capital improvement plan, but I don't think it's been decided yet whether we're actually going to move forward with right it. and Chris knew that is the reasoning is we have to get started on the budget and CIP and get it moving forward if it if it fails and that money just won't be spent it'll sure be put back okay. but if it's not there and the council says yeah we're going to do it we wouldn't be able to do it because that money then is not earmarked there so gotcha yeah so the 343 is basically the city's contribution so that we don't have to charge 343 cumulatively to the properties that are benefiting from doing the street yes. improvement. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Um, any other questions? Nope. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. Moving on to parks. Parks. Um, we, I understand that we have gotten the grant for the Cochrane uh, Memorial Park. So uh, Chris has uh, earmarked that uh, grant along with some city funds to uh, do that work, start the work on that park. Um, Mill Pond Park upgrade is, um, when Mill Pond, when they get the park mm -hmm. completed there around 17th, there's some other items that, um, that the builder or developer is not responsible for that they want as amenities in the park. So uh, Chris put, a little extra money in there to take, be able to take care of those items. Gary, did you have some? I don't think so. It's not. <laughs> um, the skate park feasibility study, uh, I think was from the park advisory board um, that made it onto the CIP. Um, so there's earmarked some money for that. And then as I understand it, uh, or for the feasibility, and as I understand it, they're looking at a, a grant to construct mm -hmm. the skate park. So that is uh, the $300,000 earmark there. Okay, any questions? Councilor Lowe. Well, Councilor Kaz, you might have you might appreciate this question, but again, from our finance admin meeting yesterday, there was a discussion about trails and uh, and paths. So I don't know if that's I don't know if that would be part of the park or that's part of the pathway in the in the back. And I'm not sure is is that something that should be considered in this 
and I'm just, I don't know what the answer is. I'm just is the uh, is the trail that you talked about is that just through the new park? Well, no, no, it's it's. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, Councillor Mo. Um, it's the uh, use of ARPA funds, and I had asked that some of those funds be used for uh, this trails and the skate park, um, but. Um, Mayor Jones pointed out that there's likely to be funding, grant funding available for the skate park. But I'm hoping that some of those funds will be used for trails, in which case this would have to be updated. My understanding is, is the ARPA funds are completely separate from this, from the CIP. Yep. Um, so we wouldn't, if, if we're expanding trails this next year, um, we wouldn't wouldn't be able to because we don't have them identified as a project. Um, and my understanding is that those ARPA funds coming from a whole different funding source would be used to do trails if that's what is uh, passed by council. Mm -hmm. Is that right, Mike? My... You're pretty much right on, yeah. And there, it's a separate funding source, but we can put it where we want. Um, We'll be discussing that on Monday night. So, but yeah, we did we did spend time on it yesterday with the, the finance and administration committee. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, Councillor Kazi, we did. I remember you're talking about the trails. So, <laughs> been forgotten. <laughs> Councillor though, it sort of begs the question for me in light of the ARPA discussion yesterday. Um, and I understand they're separate funds and, and they can be allocated, but so if, if some of that does get put towards um, any of these projects, then that's just a decision or an adjustment that's made at the time uh, council makes a decision or we receive the money, is that correct? That is correct, yeah. Okay. We'll make so, an adjustment, yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor Lehman. Yeah, I'm a little bit confused by the last few minutes of the discussion. So like, for example, going back and looking at the, um, <coughs> the $300,000 for the skate park, we don't know that we're going to get a grant for that, but we basically put 300 into the capital improvement plan. So in case we do get that money, then it's in the plan and we can spend it. But it sounds like what you're saying for the ARPA money that we may use for trails, we don't have to put that into the CIP plan we would still be able to use it if we get that money, even though it's not in the CIP. Is that correct? I just want to make sure that we don't sit here a year from now and go, oh yeah, now we can finally build those trails that we have the ARPA money for because now we've had time to put it into the CIP. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. is there a clarification on that? <laughs> so what's the answer? We got the question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna, you know, Monday night is when we talk about, and probably Tuesday morning we'll be revising this spreadsheet here, with how we, however the money was decided to be spent by the committee, um, or recommended. Um, I understand your point, and you know we could probably change that if we don't get a grant, we we change it to ARPA, but maybe we just go for the grant revenue. Councilor Lehman, I, I don't really have a, a clear answer on the ARPA yet until we know where it's going to be spent. Um, right. I guess my question more is to the point, if you look on the trails page, there's almost nothing in there mm -hmm. right now. So if we decided as a body that we're going to spend $100,000 of ARPA funds on bike and footpath projects, there aren't any projects listed. So my understanding is that we therefore couldn't spend that money on those projects because it wasn't in the capital improvement plan. That was the question. Okay. Uh, okay. We still have time to revise this uh, with whatever is decided uh, in the next couple of weeks. This is just draft. We're starting to get getting feedback from you all. And um, now I understand your point. Yeah. Cause I was thinking about that too. There's nothing there. And we're talking about paths. So you know, that's something we'll probably talk about. You know, I'll talk to Chris in the morning and see, get his input. But I, I kind of feel I, I understand what you're saying, and we'll, we'll approach that with Chris to make sure this does not forget. It's not forgotten. So, Thanks. 
Yeah. Uh, Councillor Lehman, I understand it. I get your point now. Um, okay. Yeah, it was a hard question for some reason to ask. <laughs> I don't Glad you know asked why. <laughs> Two places. I'm going, I was looking over here. I, I'm with you. Okay. Um, I would point out that the three projects that Chris had suggested that the ARPA many be used <laughs> for are all reflected here, and they're all sewer projects. Yeah. Um, so that's why there's nothing in the past. So, um, but I'm hoping that there will be. Yeah. <laughs> And you're saying nothing in paths. Are you are you talking paths under the park plan or the bike path footpath? Bike path footpath. Okay, bike path footpath is many that we get from ODOT for right. trails and paths, and it can only be used on pathways that I I believe intersect or parallel the Highway Twenty or. Uh, Applegate, where the highway is. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, really? So they give us money uh. to be able to put pathways and stuff along their highways so we couldn't take it and build a path uh, through Mary's River Park or anything because it's, mm -hmm. it's not adjacent to the highway. So if That's we wanted to spend know. money on yeah. paths, it would need to go in the park section. It right. wouldn't go in the right. path section. Right. And so we'll or make streets sure. or one of those where, where we would be putting mm -hmm. paths. Right. Thank you. For, that was a great clarification. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Good. All right. Um, Shall we move on to the storm drains? All righty. Um, again, the, the main project we have is uh, the downtown streetscape uh, project, which is supposed to start this summer, uh, coming up this summer. And our portion of the storm drain part was around 300,000, I think uh, just a little less, but there's a little bit of, um, breathing room in there in case uh, construction costs are higher and uh, there's something that they come across. Uh, and then the other uh, later on for 23-24 is the 16th Street project that uh, I, I've been in all the other departments really. Okay. Are there any questions about storm drains? So the streetscape part, that's kind of the bioswale uh, thing that we've been talking about. I mean, it would include the bioswale, would it not? I believe that's true, yes. Okay. Yeah, because we are, I think we are on the hook for the bioswale. Okay. okay. Um. <clears throat> we also should have more, well, we'll see. Our, our stormwater master plan should be completed this fiscal year, so that should identify more projects that uh, that we would have in the future. Okay. All right. Um, shall we move on to the bike path, footpath? We um, didn't have anything identified. Um, I think usually we we allocate the full amount of money uh, to just the generic bike footpath project. So if uh, something does come up that, that we need to use the money for, we find uh, something that a, a path that we want to use that works in the ODOT uh, rules for, for spending this money, it's available uh, for us to do. And then we come to the council and, or, I don't know if we have to, because we're only, we're talking just a little over $3,000. So that's almost maintenance type stuff costs. So it's nothing major uh, cost wise. So, um, but I would, I would assume it would come up either here or in, at a council meeting that we're going to do a project uh, and use that. I think the last time we, 
some of the projects that we've used it for in the past have been uh, lighting along uh, the Huntsaker bike path uh, since it intersected with ODOT. Um, we were able to use that through that area to light it since it was a connection, a direct connection to uh, basically getting into Corvallis from that bike path. Uh, we've also used it for paving that whole bike path um, in the in the past. So those are kind of some of the, the projects that we had. And uh, I believe, as a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure that uh, we didn't have a specific project when we did the full overlay of the whole path. And it just happened to be that Corvallis was doing it and the uh, contractor had his, the narrower um, uh, asphalt screed machine. So we just kind of tagged onto their their quote said, no, oh, yeah, we've got the money, let's use it here and get a good deal. So since they're already in town and uh, so we used it, those are kind of some of the things that we've used it for in the past. Councillor Lehman. <clears throat> yeah, so just, I just wanted to be clear that every year ODOT sends us some money and in, in this year it happens to be $3,708 we're projecting that I'm sure there's some formula somewhere, but I just wanted to make sure that was the case that every year they basically send us a check and we either spend it or keep it to spend it later. Yes. Right? Okay. Thank you. And I don't know that it's, Mike, is it, it's not 3,600 a year, is it? No, it, um, we get about 45 grand each year. 1% has to go to this particular fund. So 99 goes to the street fund, 1% goes to this fund. Where it's, you know, so it's a, a rough guesstimate of 400 a month. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin, could I ask you to, or whomever has the, the editable file to this, could you add a footnote indicating the source and the limitations on the use of these funds? Yes. So I don't have to remember every year. <laughs> but if you didn't ask, I wouldn't have much to talk about. Well, I'll, I'll find something else to ask you about. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions on the capital improvement plan? I think we need to see a revised version before we can move this on to the council. Councilor Lowe? So are we talking about to the facility improvement schedule or are we not, is that no, just the well, last couple of oh, yeah, pages? we do have uh, two more. Well, since they weren't updated, oh, this, okay. is a, this is exactly what was in last year's capital oh, improvement. Plan. Okay, good. In that case, but I do have a question, okay. uh, if I can. So that being said, this isn't the correct numbers, but uh, at what point, if we wanted to talk about a particular <clears throat> facility improvement and we wanted to vary from the project, projected time, something would happen, at what point in the process could that be, could a counselor or a budget committee member, I mean, where in the project process would we raise that question and who would raise the question? I would think it'd be this committee, yeah. this committee. tonight okay. or with yeah. the next one or um, talking to Chris about it for the, the upgrade for between the meetings. Okay, yeah. so so I do want to raise that. <laughs> and I have spoken to Chris, but not so much in the context of, of, the, <clears throat> of this improvement schedule. So my little bailiwick here is the library and uh, we, <clears throat> I, I'm on the uh, full disclosure. I'm on the uh, library foundation board. I serve as president. I'm also on the Benton County Public Library Advisory Board, and I'm uh, have pretty close contact with Ashley Chavez, who Chavez, who is the library director. And as you might imagine, uh, being in Philomath <clears throat> and having uh, the second largest library building, the the library district works out of, there's a lot of interest in it. Uh, there does seem to be more uh, a movement of wanting to uh, work, move along a little quicker in looking at say the design element than what's shown here. So I don't know if this is 
correct, but we're saying designed in 23, 24. So I'm looking at if there was a way to move that design into the 22, 23 budget. Uh, there's more discussion that Chris is gonna have with the library director. There are a number of things about the existing facility that are not, um, well, the community needs, but the, the building itself is, is sort of limited. Uh, meeting space being a big one. Uh, when, and Kevin, I don't know if Chris, has he talked to you at all about the conversation that I had with him about that building? No. You know, okay. Um, well, anyway, we talked, he, we talked about different scenarios and even though it's in a, a floodplain area, there are ways to do some remodeling with it. We could still work with that, according to Chris. Mm -hmm. So I'm very interested in looking at when we might be able to uh, go to the design or accelerate really the looking at the library, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, Mike would have to correct me on that, but I would think to be able to get, get it moved up to the 22, 23, you could rob the money for the parking lot and landscape replacement and move that into um, the line item for the design. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, possible, yeah, we could do that. Having uh, said that, Gary informed us at uh, our meeting yesterday that the parking lots at the library, the police and city hall are all breaking apart. Uh, we had them uh, uh, crack sealed and, and resealed a few years ago, right? Um, several years ago, I think now, three or four years ago, and that has probably reached its lifespan. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Gary popped on there to fill us in a little bit better on, on that. So yeah. that would be, um, that would be an option. I think it would be one that would be a, a um, kind of a risky, well, it'd be whatever you want to be with the line of risk. Do we move it and hope that the parking lot holds up uh, until that gets replaced? Can Mike um, do a little shifting on uh, some budget numbers and, and make that work? Or we can hear from Gary now for, uh, yeah, for he's, our, he's our street person, so. I think if we need to push them out, we can. The biggest problem we, we face in uh, those three buildings is there's so much water underneath uh, the asphalt and everything. Um, as and water doesn't extend uh, asphalt life. Uh, it causes cracking and stuff like that. Um, if, if you guys want to push it out, we can push it out. It's, uh, uh, I, I Honestly, I wouldn't go more than three more years. Um, just due to the fact that they're starting to crack, crack up pretty good now. I would say if we kept all meetings on Zoom for the next few years where we're not <laughs> tracking cars in and out on the asphalt, that might help. <laughs> okay. That's a creative, for saying that. creative solution, Kevin. I appreciate it. You got to think creative. outside the box sometimes and that's where I'm at. Councillor Layman. Yeah. I'm um, just, this may be more of a question for Mike, but if we as a council decided that we wanted to plug $30,000 of the ARPA funds in there to do the conceptual design, can we in fact do that? Probably. Um, I mean, it's for, that's an infrastructure project, um, kind of stretching it. <laughs> Oh, I can, I can, I can stretch real good. I'm pretty limber. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I guess more of the question was if we had a, a source of funds to plug in here, that wasn't part of the capital improvement plan. Can that, can that be done yeah. realistically? I, it, realistically? Yeah. If, it, if push comes to shove and we have to do it. Yeah. I would say we could, we'll find a, find a way to deal with it. Um, I mean, we're scheduled to shift um, quite a bit of money. You know, each year we can just reallocate and see what happens. So, um, 
Yeah, I don't see why I didn't even do the keep the um, parking lot renovations online too, because, right. you know, I, I didn't realize there was water underneath the parking lot. It's like, oh my goodness. Yeah, it's the, no wonder it's falling apart. So um, yeah, yeah, Councillor Lehman, if we have to, we, we, we will reallocate uh, to make it happen. So whatever the council wants us to do. Okay, thank you. Could I just ask for fellow councillors? I mean, by made my pitch for the library. Do you, are you supportive of that? Do you feel that it's not appropriate? Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, Kevin, I did going back to my trails again. I, I meant to ask you if, if um, some of that ARPA money is allocated to trails, does your department have it in its bandwidth to do that? I don't know where the ARPA money is going for sure. I don't think it's been officially allocated. No, it um, is. And Mike knows probably a little bit more, but I think it can only be spent on certain, I would think trails would fall into that as a health. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. health yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I'm, I'm asking if your department has the bandwidth to manage that project. To we, actually we, build them? Yeah. Or just to maintain? Uh, <laughs> build them. I mean, no on both, but. Um, <laughs> you don't. If they were built, Gary shakes his head. I'm more optimistic. Um, <laughs> We would make it happen <laughs> somehow. Right, Gary? <laughs> All the time, yes. <laughs> we, we might need more staff or something like that is what you're saying. We'll make it happen. <laughs> well, actually, we've been looking at uh, the uh, uh, tower meter reader, which would free up a whole lot of hours of our yeah. crew from meter reading and checking mm -hmm. meter reads and doing all the meter stuff. Um, if that were to happen, then that would free up at least one person uh, all the time. And I think Mike, they have the same thing basically in Newport. Yeah, that was a big shift. Once we got to the, once we got the AMIs online, yeah, it was a big shift They we pulled three guys out and they were moved into other projects. So it's a good project. It just a, takes a while to put it together. Mm. Yeah, and it's, uh, what was it Gary? 233,000 to- 233. Um, any other questions related to the capital improvement? Any other business we need to discuss? We have the equipment replacement um, schedule okay. also. Yeah, but that's not been updated either. <laughs> well, it's it wasn't updated because it was correct when he sent it out. So they're all basically drafts, up-to-date drafts now. Um, Which there isn't a lot of changes on anyway. Most of it was all just carry forward. Um, I don't know what Gary decided on trying to replace that dump truck this time, or you want to put it off for a year and, and see. I forget what we talked about. The only thing that uh, is on, in, on my radar right now is the uh, vehicle number 46, which is the two yard dump truck. Uh, that's our one of our main heavy used trucks, and um, it's getting long in the tooth already. I know it's uh, ten years old. Um, we just had to put a bunch of money into it, and uh, it may need some more money here shortly. Um, it just it carries so much weight with the rock and bark dust and concrete and all that stuff that it messes with the. We had all new ball joints, new steering box put on it just uh, last week. Uh, now it needs a new alignment. 
tires are coming soon. Um, typically when the trucks start going bad, they don't get better and they just eventually will start nickel diming you. <laughs> that would probably be the only truck that we're looking at uh, this year. Everything else is pretty rock solid so far. Okay. So um, if that's okay. So do we need to bump that up? Is that what you're suggesting? The replacement for that to try and bump it up. I'd like to, uh, you know, if we can, it was, it's two years out, but I'd like to see if we can maybe bump it up to this year, um, if possible. Well, it was two years out last year, so it's just a year out. Well, actually, I. I don't know who changed some of these numbers, but it, it actually was three years last year. I made the correction for two years. Um, so it, it'd be two years from now. When I did this a uh, month or two ago, we weren't, we were having problems with it, but not like we are now. So, okay. so I'd like to see if we can lower it down to one year, which would be this coming fiscal year. Yeah. Uh, Mike is the balance. Um, the current balance for that, correct? Or is that it? No, that it is. Uh, well, right, because uh, Gary, that's going to be replacing 46, right? That's correct. Okay, so we've got money set aside for it. So we've got, you know, 40,000, you know, 41,000, but basically. But, you know, are you going to be able to get it within a year or two? I mean, never uh, probably not. Um, yeah, I was going to mention that getting new vehicles right now is almost impossible, right? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. yes. Pretty much. I, I got a truck on order that I ordered back in October, and they told me that I might see it by this coming summer. So, yeah. so I, even if I ordered this, this <laughs> two yard dump truck today, I probably still wouldn't see it until July anyway. So, um, they're Murphy's, everything six Murphy's months law out. would be that they have one just sitting around. Yeah, just just <laughs> one sitting under. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be my luck. Yeah. No, I ordered a little Ford Ranger uh, to replace oh, one of our other service trucks, and she told me, I think she said twenty eight weeks minimum. Wow. Yeah. 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 And that's a Ford Ranger. That's not a. Uh, that's yeah. not an F five fifty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you should, there's probably millions of Ford Rangers out there. They should just be sitting on the shelf, but apparently not. No. <laughs> Councillor Lehman. Yeah, not to get off of this subject, but I'm very intrigued by the automatic meter reading subject. And I didn't notice that in the, in the budget here or in the schedule. So I was just wondering why, if, if that would be such a boon to us, why it's not listed in, in here anywhere. Pretty much because we put it off or we were putting it off until the water treatment plant's done. So we make sure that that's our focus. That's our, that's our bread and butter. Our main, our main thing is that reservoir and treatment plant. So uh, we weren't looking really to spend any money outside of just the treatment plant and reservoir stuff right now. Right. And Did I think do it'll them? show up later. We just got, Gary just actually got pricing on it. They finally sent it to him today. So um, it just, it didn't make the, the update. Gotcha. And could you do it concurrently if the funds were allocated to do it? Yeah, I would think so. Oh yeah, the, the tower is, is pretty simple. I mean, it's just a matter of uh, getting the company in here and moving forward, so. Okay, thanks is on the water budget. Yeah. And I think we're pretty much all set up, aren't we, Gary? All we need is the, uh, our meters and everything we've got set up or ready to go. All we would need would be the tower and software, right? When I talked to the sales rep today, he said, you guys are way ahead of the curve, curve, because you already got all your meters in. Uh, you're not buying meters and trying to install them at the same time you already got your meters in the ground with the appropriate um hardware you just need the tower and the software to make it work gotcha 
and, and 233 oh. might be high. Uh, we had one, uh, what do they call it, area um, survey? Propaga uh, propagation study. Propagation or study that said we would need uh, one tower and one relay box. And they kind of quoted us two towers um, just in case for uh, gotcha. budgeting. The, the uh, relay boxes are really or seventy five hundred dollars or eight thousand dollars I think and where the towers are the hundred and twenty five thousand. Gotcha. And then Councilor Kazi, did you say that was already in the water section? Yeah, yeah. it is it's budgeted for um the following fiscal year for 2324 and it's 180,000. And that 180,000 was on numbers that we had prior to um, I got new numbers today, so we'll have to update that one. Okay. So you're saying it's it's lower than? Yeah, it was 233 was the numbers, 233,000. Oh, it's higher. Higher, yeah. Yeah, it's higher, yeah. My dog barked as soon as you were talking. I couldn't. <laughs> That's okay. So can you tell me where that is on the on the sheets we're looking at, Councilor Kazi, because I'm not seeing yeah, it. Yeah, I, I don't see it either. Oh, it's in, on the, pardon me, on the water page, mm -hmm. um, remote meter reading. Yeah. Um, it's the last project on the left margin. I must be, I must have an outdated Sheet, it would be on the revised one, it looks like. Yeah, okay. That's, oh, yeah, I don't that's have it problem. either. Yeah. Uh, I don't have it either. Uh, I was looking at the at the print one, not the revised one. That's my <laughs> fault. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for clarifying, Councilor Lehman. I thought I was going blind. <laughs> I couldn't see it. <laughs> yep, I see it now. I'm looking at the uh, revised one. There it is. Okay. okay. Disregard the last 10 minutes of conversation, please. <laughs> <laughs> Duly noted. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm, I'll need to check with Chris to find out when our next meeting is. When one other item of business that um, I want to put on a future agenda is um, there in the code. Um, it's written that the um, Park Advisory Board is supposed to report to the Public Works Committee. And I would like to change the code to um, remove that language because I think that's a layer of bureaucracy that we don't need. Um, but we did that, didn't we? No. We talked about it. <laughs> we, we talked about it in this committee quite a lot. <laughs> but um, but nothing was done. Was it? It wasn't bumped up to the council level. I don't believe so. Nothing. It may. We may have had some discussion, but nothing was resolved, as far as I remember. All Just, right. Maybe okay. I'll dig through my notes because it seemed to me like we did make that decision at the council level. Oh. It should be in the minutes. Yeah, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll dig through and see if I can find it. To kick back yeah. to the public works committee or to address it at the council to just have it report to the council i thought uh, we made council. that verbiage change oh. but I'll, I'll verify that uh, Councilor though just one other thing i was wondering if uh, there's any flexibility in the meeting time probably the five o'clock for the prior members of the committee work because i think of jobs and such but um I, I don't know how anybody else feels about meeting at five or would prefer earlier, just throwing it out there. I'm completely flexible. So whatever you would like. Okay. Well, as the only person on the commission that has a job, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually fairly flexible as well. Yeah. So okay. if we wanted to do it like at three or something like that, that would be, that would be fine. Okay. That's kind of my preference if it's okay with everyone. Um, Kevin, are you okay? Kevin and Gary are in my, does three work for you guys? Yeah, works great. Yeah, yeah. Don't have okay. to drive home in the dark then. 
Okay. <laughs> All right, then three o'clock it is. That uh, brings up the other question on, uh, we usually meet the first Thursday of the month. Um, so that would put us on a March 3rd, which is next week. Um, wow. Do you want to put it out to the first Thursday in April as our next meeting? No. Um, is that too late, Mike? Yeah, I, I think we probably need to move a little earlier than that. I mean, next week, we'll know, uh, have a general idea on ARPA. I mean, but we can't meet the first Thursdays. That's almost impossible. Right. So, I mean, um, is everybody okay with, I mean, do you want to set a time tonight or let Mike and Chris figure out? Let me talk to Chris. Uh, all that first, and then we can send an email out and then get it posted and everything else. Yeah. Is that Give us Sounds time. good. Good. Yeah. I do think we need to get it done before we get into the formal budget process though, right? Yeah. So we don't want to wait yeah. too long before we, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, depending on what we do with ARPA, that's that's a big picture. Okay. Okay, we will uh, once Mike and Chris get uh, stuff figured out on the budget, then we can we'll set a we'll set a time as soon after that and uh, send it out an email and then post it and everything and get it noticed. Okay, Great. sounds good. Um, well, if there's no further business, then I will adjourn the meeting. Outstanding. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you all for everything. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.